Well, John Carnahan joins us in the studio here. I've had to practice that. <laughs> John, you're over to talk um, about crime, prevention of crimes. Yes. You've been talking to um, various people I know, and, and you also got the House of Keys members coming in. Yes. You're an ex-cop. Yes. From where exactly? Obviously Scotland. Yeah, you? Strathclyde. I was, I was a detective chief super in uh, Strathclyde. And a tough place? Well, it was. It's now one of the safest cities in Europe. That's Glasgow totally is one of the safest cities in Europe. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. So prevention, T tell us more. What, what exactly are you, you, you trying to tell everybody? Well, our, our journey in Scotland was uh, exactly the comment you made at the start. Glasgow had a reputation for violence, which was well earned. Um, and in 2004, uh, along with a colleague, I established a unit called the Violence Reduction Unit. Mm -hmm. We used public health modelling to reduce violence. And um, it was hugely successful, um, the model, not just the Violence Reduction Unit, because it was about health, education, social services, communities, individuals, third sector. The point was, um, if we had left it as a crime issue, only police would have been dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And police deal with a point of impact. They deal with a the failure demand. There's failure in lots of places, and the, the end point is often the police, or an A&E department, or a social worker's desk. So we, along using that public health model, started to think far more about primary prevention. Okay, but that's one of the toughest areas, or was. The Isle of Man has no crime. We have milk cartons absolutely. taken, and you know, this is the safest place to be. So yeah. what can you be doing well, here yeah, for us? Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's the positive. Uh -huh. um, if, if you were just sitting back and saying, well, compared to the rest of the place, we're okay. Mm -hmm. If you have one victim of violence, you ask them if they feel it's a good thing. It's not a good thing, the levels of it. Any kind of violence, particularly uh, 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 interpersonal violence, but crime in general. But I think, too, it's not just about that. It's not just about that. What what we started to do in primary prevention was understand, for instance, that what happens in a child's life when they're a child is hugely important. It can have an impact all through their years. Mm -hmm. Adverse childhood experiences now has been talked about all over the world, um, where an adverse childhood experience and the numbers that they have in their childhood can impact on how they end up in care, for instance, how they end up in prison, how they end up with addiction problems. So. These are all shared agendas. These are all problems that are not just problems for the police and challenges for the police, but challenges for health service, challenges for social work, challenges for care, um, challenges for communities that want to thrive and do well. Um, they want everyone to do well. And I think that's the message that we're bringing, that um, this is a, it's everybody's issue and we need to work better together. And that's about relationships. Is it a mindset well. then? Is it the way people oh, think yeah, about things? Absolutely. That when we started to speak about violence in terms of health, and we spoke about contagions, and we spoke about epidemic waves, and we spoke about primary and secondary prevention. This was new language. Yeah. So when I was asked once if a thousand extra police officers would make a difference, I said, yes, it would. I said, but a thousand extra health visitors would be a really clever thing to do. Because if we help families to be as good as they can be, and we help children to have a really good early years experience, then we'll have fewer people in the care system, fewer people with addiction problems. A whole so prevention rather than cure, isn't it? Absolutely. It's the only cure. How is Isle of Man policing? Have you had a chance to see how it's done here? Yeah, well, I spoke to, to um, some of the, the command team yesterday and, and Stuart, meeting the chief constable later. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's refreshing and at the same time disappointing that the challenges around the place are the same for everyone. You use your words very carefully there. Yeah. It's almost disappointing. Explain. Because the, the challenges that we faced were about working in partnership, were about sharing information. When I speak in Mexico, the challenges are about sharing information. If I speak in the Philippines, the challenges are information. If I speak in London, it's Fine, about yeah, information. Yeah, okay, okay. So, it's exact, so you speak about Douglas, and it is, it's first time uh, Isle of Man, the first time I've been here, and it's, it's in some many levels, idyllic, but so, they uh, want to make it better. So same you having to change mindsets? As, I mean, yes. get into, into the actual nuts and bolts of how things are done. Yeah, there's a cultural thing around that. There's a cultural thing about when, when I'm asked, we had a very successful gang initiative in Glasgow, um, which is uh, renowned, uh, um, that we ran. And now I joke, half joke, about the idea that when people ask me to speak about gangs, I say, well, w would you want me to speak about territorial gangs and, 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 and violent gangs in the street? Or will I speak about police and social work and health and education and, and those gangs? Because those are territorial. They also have acronyms. They think they're better than everyone else. They have their own their own money, they think they're, 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 they're protective. And in the worst cases, they are. Mm -hmm. And in the best cases, where people work well together, 
you get real added value. Do you find you get a reception that's positive from these yes. audiences, or, or you got these you know, the old guard going? Uh, no. Nope. Yeah, you're trying to tell something, you know, suck yeah. eggs and all that sort no, of thing. No, I, I always get nodding heads and people coming up saying thanks for saying that because I often find that everyone gets the strategy. I mean, if, if even when I speak to politicians and I've spoken to loads of politicians um, we've got a national unit, um, they get it. No politician wants to do the wrong thing. Everybody wants to do the right thing. No mother, when they have a child, says, I'm going to make your life a bloody misery. They don't mm -hmm. do that. Sure. Um, but it happens, so we need to work out how that happens. You're very inspirational. Very good. I'm enjoying <laughs> this. Um, people got more information, can get uh, is your website or details of what you do? Yeah, well, no, no well, not, not so much now. No. But if they go to the Violence Reduction Unit, uh, um, Action on Violence, uh, um, they, will, they will find all of, all of the things that, we, that we've done there. I mean, and I know it's... You know, the Isle of Man, you, you have your own uh, uh, challenges over here, I expect that, um, I mean, one of the challenges will be, for instance, in rural policing, and, and policing where there are great relationships, one of the challenges that comes up is in relation to domestic violence. So domestic violence is a huge issue everywhere in the world, even here. You know, I often say to people, if you, if you think you don't have domestic violence in your then you're the only place in the world that doesn't have it. I, I hear what you're saying. I, mean, I think that's people hear it's on a low level, but it carries on. It's, it's it is, insidious. So, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's that. It, it's insidious. And what might happen is a woman might be the victim of domestic violence, but her partner is in a, a, a place in society that's friendly with the local police, that's friendly with the local health, and is friendly with the local teacher, and therefore doesn't want to say too much about it because it's too difficult. So it becomes very difficult to deal with. So, um, it's described as a wicked problem, which means once you fix one part of it, something else will be there. You know, there'll be a consequence to that. Uh, but it, it, it's, I think it's, it's, it's hugely impressive that even with the levels of crime that you have, the detection rates that you have, there is still that saying, well, we don't have many victims, we, but we want to have even fewer. We don't have much crime, but we want even less. And we want to stop that even more. Because I remember in Glasgow, we started doing it. Someone said to me once, and it might have been an interview like this, but, but we're not as bad as, say, Chicago, or we're not as bad as Los Angeles. And I'm saying, well, is that our aspiration, really? Not to be as bad as another city? Is that our aspirations? That's a bit disappointing. I said, well, I aspire for a bit more, you know. Uh, um, and whilst I'm not unrealistic, I mean, it's a violence reduction unit. It wasn't an eradication unit. Violence is there. But um, we can make a difference. And, and, and here, that model of public health, the model of collaboration and adding value. And I, I've spoken to a number of people since I've, after I've delivered what I've said to them and spoke for a couple of hours, who've come up to me and said, absolutely, I get it. I see what you mean. That's really important.